hello friends welcome you all to another video and today we are going to continue with the unit number one section a types of words and now today we are going to see the ode so you can see on your screen also the definition of word in its uh, traditional application ode denotes a long relic poem that is serious in subject and treatment elevated in style and elaborate in its transaic structure. Norman Maclean said that the term now calls to mind the relic which is massive public in its proclamations and Pindaric in its classical prototype. The prototype was established by the Greek poet Pindar whose odes were modeled on the songs by the chorus in Greek drama. His complex stanzas were patterned in sets of three, moving in a dance rhythm to the left. The chorus chanted the strophe, moving to the right, the antistrophe, then standing still the epode. The regular or Pindaric ode in English is a close imitation of Pindar's form with all the strophes and antistrophes written in one stanza pattern and all the epidotes in another. This form was introduced into English by Ben Jonson's ode to the immortal memory and friendship of the noble pair Sir Lucius Carey and Sir H. Morrison and it was written in 1629. The typical construction can be conveniently studied in this form or in Thomas Gray's The Progress of Poesy which was written in 1757. The irregular ode was introduced in 1656 by Abraham Cowley, who imitated the Pindaric style and matter but disregarded the recurrent stanzaic pattern in each strophic triad. Instead, he allowed each stanza to establish its own pattern of varying line lengths, number of lines, and rhyme scheme. This type of irregular stanzaic structure which is free to order in accordance with shift in subject and mood has been the most common for the English ode ever since. Wordsworth ode Intimations of Immortality which was written in 1807 is representative. Pindar's ode were encomastic that is they were written to praise and glorify someone. In this instance of Pindar, the ode celebrated a victorious athlete in the Olympic Games, the earlier English odes and many later ones were also written to eulogize something such as a person, John Dryden's Anne Killing You, or the arts of music or poetry as John Dryden's Alexander's Feast, or a time of day uh, by Collins' Ode to Evening, or abstract concept like uh, Thomas Gray's Hymn to Adversity and Wordsworth's Ode to Duty. Romantic poets prefer the personal ode of description and passionate meditation, which is stimulated by and sometimes at its close river to an aspect of the outer scene and turns on the attempt to solve either a personal emotional problem or a generally human one. Wordsworth intimations ode, Corey's dejection and ode, Shelley's ode to the west wind. Recent examples of this latter type are Alan Tate's Ode to the Con Confederate Dead and Wallace Stevens' The Idea of Order at a Key West are important. There is another type of ode that is the Horatian Ode was originally modeled on the matter, tone and form of the odes of the Roman Horace. In contrast to the passion, visionary boldness and formal language of Findar's odes, many Horatian odes are calm, meditative and colloquial. They are also used homostrophic that is written in single stripped stanza form and shorter than Pindaric ode. Examples are John Marrow's, George Marrow's and Oration's ode upon Cronwell's Return from Ireland and John Keats ode to Atom which was published in 1820. So again hey guys I am going to repeat all, all these things which I have discussed just. So I am going to read out what is written on your screen and you can also read with me. An ode is a form of poetry such as sonnet or elegy. Ode is a literary technique that is relical in nature but not very lengthy. You have often read 
ones in which poets praise people, natural scenes, and abstract ideas. Ode is derived from a Greek word odin, which means to chant or sing. It is highly solemn and serious in its tone and subject matter, and usually is used with elaborate patterns of stanzas. However, the tone is often formal. A silent feature of ode is its uniform material fit, but poets generally do not strictly follow this rule through use highly elevated theme. Types of ode. So uh, already all the type I have discussed. Odes are of three types including Pindaric ode or Pindar ode, Horatian ode and third irregular ode. So again in short I am going to read out all the things. Pindaric ode or Pindar ode. This ode was named after an ancient Greek poet Pindar who began writing choral poems that were meant to be sung at public events. It contained three traits, stroke, anti-stroke and final stanza as a ode with irregular rhyme patterns and length of lines. Number second, that is Horatian ode. The name of this ode was taken from the Latin poet Horace. Unlike heroic odes of Pindar, Horatian ode is informal, meditative and intimate. These odes dwelled upon interesting subject matters that were simple and were pleasing to all senses. Since Horatian odes are informal in tone, they are devoid of any strict rules. Irregular ode, third form. Uh, this type of ode is without any formal rhyme scheme and structure such as the Pindaric ode. Hence, the poet has great freedom and flexibility to try any types of concept and moods. William Wordsworth and John Keats were such poets who extensively wrote irregular odes, taking advantage of this form. Uh, let's move to the last part of this lecture, that is the function of ode. So, ode is a form of a real poetry in which poets use a certain metrical pattern and rhyme scheme to express their noble and lofty sentiments in serious and sometimes satirical tone. Since the themes of odes are inspiring and lofty, they have universal appeal. Also, by using sublime and expressional style, poets endeavor to compose grand and elevated types of odes. Sometimes odes may be humorous, but they are always thoughtful, intended to explore important themes and observations related to human relations, emotions, and senses. So, hey guys, if you didn't get anything, please ask me in a comment section. I am there to solve your queries and your problems. So, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.